is quite important and you've 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 pulled it apart. I'm gonna to turn to Professor Nakfi and see uh, his opinions of where the where the pitfalls and the opportunities are. Yeah, can I just go back on the on the data uh, the, the question about the data? So the, the, the metaverse is going to generate hundred times more data than our current two D uh, social media platform. So um, when I'm on LinkedIn, LinkedIn owns my data. You you cannot download your entire LinkedIn history and take it to Twitter, for example, along with your uh, contacts and your digital influencer status and all that. So um, when I am on uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter doesn't know uh, where in the room I am looking or what my heart rate is or what's, what's the color of my iris or if I have a slight tremor in my hand. And this is all the information that is going to be uh, generated and captured by these metaverse uh, platforms. So big tech companies will will have this data if we if if we if we are looking at uh, kind of centralized metaverses so if you think that the social media is kind of you know radicalized communities polarized societies imagine what could happen in in 3d environment of metaverse so the idea is um, uh, of this decentralized metaverse is to move um, move away from from this model to a more a stakeholder uh, model where all parties um, have uh, have equal uh, kind of say or or, or, or um, towards the governance. Um, <clears throat> now, your question about what are the threats to building a decentralized metaverse? I think it it depends who you ask. Um, centralized tax uh, uh, systems are, are are a threat to decentralization. Uh, legacy systems are a threat to innovation. Email was a threat to postal postal mail. Amazon was a threat to physical commerce. So I think it depends on who you ask. Um, we have become very used to um, trading our privacy for convenience, and we don't often think about it. And I think discussions like this and technologies like Metaverse have actually uh, uh, waken us up to, to actually think about uh, all these um, uh, challenges uh, that we have faced in the past and how to, how to overcome them. Another point I want to make is ill-informed cynics uh, are a big threat to metaverse. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, educating policymakers, stakeholders, cynics, okay, so not skeptics, because skeptics can change their point of view when you present them with evidence. Cynics won't, they never will. And these are the people who told us that blockchain is dead and crypto is dead and NFTs are over and now metaverse is over. So please don't listen to cynics. Do listen to skeptics, uh, hear their point of view, so see what concerns they have. Uh, because as, as David said, there are, there are lots of challenges, um, technical challenges, accessibility challenges. Uh, metaverse requires high-speed internet, both in terms of latency, bandwidth. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of work we have to do on digital literacy. Um, privacy and security is a concern. Um, how do we protect users' privacy? Uh, how do we ensure that uh, uh, the data uh, protection measures are there? Um, secure identity, governance is another one. Some of other speakers touched on that. Uh, it Metaverse requires governance structures that are, that are fair, uh, have to prevent any uh, abuse, protect the rights of users. And, and building such structures is, is challenging, I think. And it requires collaboration of all stakeholders, not just the uh, the technical technicians and the and the web developers and blockchain developers and metaverse developers, but also what I call quadruple helix uh, a, a innovation ecosystem. So government, uh, enterprises, society, uh, and academia. So all of these in the quadruple helix have to work together. Now. I have no issues with um, uh, with centralized platforms creating digital assets or, or, or avatars or whatever, as long as they are uh, owned and controlled by the users and the users are able to kind of fully monetize and, and transfer those assets in, in open market, what we call self-sovereignty. So I think we can accept this as a, as a trade-off at, at this stage. Um, but yeah, uh, th those are my thoughts on that. Thanks, Professor. It sounds like a lot of the, the focus that you, you have uh, 
uh, that the threats are the existing threat actually to Web2 technologies as well. And the core thing about building the Web3 metaverse appears to be for you, uh, making sure that we co-build it together with all of the stakeholders. So thank you. Thank you.